I'm Dan Larson, and this is a closer look at 1983's Fortress of Fangs. Dungeons & Dragons was created in 1974 by Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson. By the early 1980s, fundamentalist religious groups had worked up a negative PR campaign founded on the belief that D&D was an actual practicing cult of wizards and witchcraft, complete with spells and curses that not only influenced children's behavior leading to drug abuse and other salacious activities, but had also resulted in the suicides of several people who had played the game. The effort was so determined that in 1983 they founded an organization called... Hang on. Let me focus. They founded an organization called BAD, B-A-D-D, -D, bothered about Dungeons and Dragons, to educate parents about the dark influence of the game and prevent further dissemination into culture. They described the game as, and I'm quoting here, a fantasy role-playing game which uses demonology, witchcraft, voodoo, murder, rape, blasphemy, suicide, assassination, insanity, sex perversion, homosexuality, prostitution, satanic-type rituals, gambling, barbarism, cannibalism, sadism, desecration, demon summoning, necromantics, divination, and other teachings. Oh yeah! <laughs> the Saturday morning cartoon and LJN toy line arrived just in time for Christmas 1983. At the center of the line was the Fortress of Fangs place at a temple of, you know, what, what was it? Uh, demonology, witchcraft, voodoo, murder, insanity, prostitution. If ever there was one, Fortress is a bit generous for a description as is Fangs. If you saw this thing looming in the distance, you would probably say something like, look there, looming in the distance. Tis a giant frog's head, like a castle, but smaller, a fortress of frogs. It looks like Kermit the Frog. Am I the only one that's this? <laughs> Most playsets were just big hollow pieces of vacuum-formed plastic. Castle Green Skull, Snake Mountain, even the great USS Flag was just a bunch of big empty pieces of plastic with stickers and antennas sticking out of it. But not the Fortress of Frogs, Fangs. This had stuff to do. First off, it meets minimum 80s playset standards. Trapdoor, jail, weapons rack. The only thing it's really missing is an elevator, but in its place. Have a slide. Architecturally, it's a two-story structure with some smaller partitioned rooms, which are all little vignettes, little places to have different kinds of encounters, even if you have to stretch your imagination a bit to make the whole thing feel bigger than it really is. Imagination is fueled by all the menacing artwork of skeletons and skulls and jagged rocks and stalactites and stalagmites. And yeah, the designer's insistence on retaining the giant head feel of a fortress as a whole probably made for some confusing moments. Warrior friend, hear me as I, Cortex the wizard, reach out with my mind, seek out the room with a giant eyeball to find me. Wait, I'm in a room with a giant eyeball on the wall. You are? I'm looking around, but I don't see you. Are you invisible? No, I mean, I don't think I am. Is it a giant frog's eye? Yes, it is! A giant left frog's eye! Left? Ah, I'm right across the hall from you. I see you now. Let <laughs> me try it again. <laughs> It doesn't really take much to see how much fun this playset is with its lava flow leading to a secret bridge opening to a treasure room surrounded by skeletons. Not to mention the giant black-winged demon sitting atop a throne that may or may not be an actual demon or an actual throne. Have fun, you are the dungeon master for this adventure. It's a very rare piece these days with so many parts and gates and rocks and stuff, and you're going to have to invest around $200 to get one even near complete and in good condition. It's about 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches, so it's not going to take up too much room in your collection, but it packs the most punch per inch, the most gimmicks in the smallest package by far of any other playset of the era. In your face, Death Star. In your face, Cobra Terror Drone. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a like, even if you only chuckled once or twice. Make sure you subscribe and share it with anyone who likes toys, D&D, or frogs, and let us know in the comments below if you've ever heard of this thing, much less owned it. I had only heard of it in whispers until a few years ago when I was able to acquire one myself and can honestly say that it was more fun than I thought it would be seeing it for the first time as an adult collector. And yeah, I know, it's supposed to be a giant snake head, but once I started writing frog jokes, I just couldn't help myself. Cut. <laughs>